This thing goes kind of crazy, and here's how it's gonna work. Galarian Moltres has solid special attack, special bulk, and speed, and it's got an insane ability called Berserk. This gives it a special attack boost when it reaches half HP. We can set up an agility to double our speed, and if we get knocked down to Berserk, grab a free special attack boost, pop a Citrus Berry for the chance for Berserk to activate again after healing, and potentially set up a Nasty Plot. Boosted up Galarian Moltres is extremely scary with Stab Fiery Wrath along with Hurricane, and if you were thinking about messing around against a Galar Moltres, think again. Look, Galarian Moltres is one of the coolest looking legendaries, and this thing just doesn't get enough love. So that is my job. If you're into this kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k. I'd love to have you as part of the journey, and if you don't click the button, you're probably going to take a Fiery Wrath to the face. I don't make the rules. Let's jump into it. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with this little Fairy Bee bastard, and this is a problem. I realize immediately I do not have any way of getting rid of hazards on this team. I don't have Rapid Spin, and I know this is the type of fellow that wants to lay down some Sticky Web, and that's going to make my entire squad slow for the whole game. So. As I lead off with the Gastrodon, I kind of just accept that fact, and we're going to try to work around it. So, I do want to get up my Stealth Rock, going to be pretty important here, but also, as they go for that Sticky Web, it's basically come down to now me realizing that one of my only ways to set up and have a good upper hand in this is with the Galarian Moltres, who is flying type and obviously doesn't care about the Sticky Web. So, we basically just trade hazards there at this point. I realize this thing can't really touch me that bad. If it wants to Quiver Dance, I'm probably going to have a bad time, but I'm just going to fire off a Surf. Because most of the time, as a lead, Rabambi is going to be with a Focus Sash. So I want to break that Sash. And this thing is going to be extra annoying and go for the Stun Spore. So Paralyzed Gastrodon doesn't really matter that much. Don't care about speed anyway. But I get that Surf off and it actually does a nice little chunk of damage, which is pretty solid. So I'm just going to continue to go for Surfs. There's nothing really that I'm super worried about here. I mean, I can't really risk switching and letting anything get you know, Stun Spore. So... They do decide to go for the Psychic Noise, gonna block me from healing, but I don't have Recover anyway, which is great. We're gonna Cowabunga that ass one more time, and that's gonna take care of the bee. So with that thing out of the way, we got a nice little 6-5 to five game, except we are pretty severely hindered by the fact that the Sticky Webs are around. And also, this thing is extremely annoying. They're gonna go into the Manaphy here, and we know that generally what this thing is gonna do is set up and try to be faster because of those sticky webs. So I'm mainly just thinking this thing's gonna go for the tail glow and I decide while I do threaten with the, the fact that I could be, you know, storm drain, it can't hit me with a water move, I'm gonna switch into my little Lego fella. We do get caught up in the sticky web, which doesn't necessarily matter. But as I bring this in, I'm gonna try to just kind of stir up this matchup a bit. I, I figure I can go for discharges boosted by that electric terrain. And it actually reveals it's gonna go for the take heart. Now, Manaphy can be annoying in many different ways. But a lot of what people are doing these days is going for Take Heart, because it not only gives you a special attack boost, but also gives you a special defense boost. So now this thing is a little bit scary. I figure I'm still just going to go for a Discharge here. I can get some pretty good chip on the fellow regardless, and also have that chance for the Para, which would, you know, help me out quite a bit. So they're actually going to go ahead and bust out the Terra. They're going to turn this fella into a Grass type, and that is not good, because now Discharge is going through a plus one special defense and a Resist. And I am just a little guy. Pincurchin is not having the easiest time here, as they do, of course, outspeed. And they're going to go for another take heart. So that's going to bring it up to plus two on special attack and special defense. And I've found myself in a spot where this Manaphy is going to be a bit of a problem here. At least it can hit pretty hard now with its, its offenses doubled. And the only way to really hit it is going to be on the physical side for any decent damage. So I realize Pincurchin is probably going to have a bad time here, as they actually end up going... For the acid armor if i figured i was gonna hit this thing on the physical side now it just immediately goes ahead and doubles that so this thing has defense all over the place as the pin curtain is going to go ahead and just off himself at the cost of at least dropping their, their special attack there are two stages so we at least negate you know the boosts from the take heart however this thing does still have basically both of its defenses doubled and it's kind of bad but, so here's the thing, I actually have a decent opportunity with the Glary Moltres here. Now I know that with its offenses dampened, I can not only take an attack, but it'll actually put me in Berserk range for a free boost. So, as they take this opportunity to go for another take heart, that's going to put it to plus three special defense, and what, plus one special attack, I am just going to go ahead and bust out the agility. I do need to ensure that if I can get past this Manaphy, 
I can be faster than their entire team just with that one agility. So we're feeling agile as hell out here and also majestic with our crazy, I guess, non-fiery wings since we're not even fire type. However, I'm realizing that uh, even at plus one special attack, I should be able to take an attack here. They don't have anything super effective, at least I imagine. And I'm going to take this opportunity to just fight setup with setup here. I can go for a nasty plot. That's going to double my special attack. And we are looking pretty nice here. We also have the benefit of, while, you know, the Grass Terra was good against my Electric, it does help me in now having a super effective Hurricane uh, on him. So they go for another Take Heart, which I realize, you know what, if you're just going to continue taking Heart, I'm going to continue thinking some just nasty, grotesque nonsense. And I go for another nasty plot as they just continue uh, to take heart. They realize that this thing is, if it can continue to just out bulk me, it could have a good time. And uh, it's also continuing to get that special attack boost at the same time. So I do, of course, now at speed, I go for that hurricane. It's not quite enough to kill because of all those boosts, but as they go for the scald, it is not gonna have enough. Thank God for that memento allows me to live I do not get the burn, it then activates Berserk, giving me another free boost. And the Citrus Berry brings me back above half. So, we have now found ourselves in a great spot fighting Setup versus Setup here. And Moltres is going to have the upper hand in being faster than everything. The good news also about the Citrus Berry is it brings me back above half. So, if they somehow do, you know, hit me with something that doesn't kill me, I'm going to get another boost bringing me to, like, fully maxed out. So... I now just go for that Fiery Wrath just to guarantee I do not have the chance to miss like a Hurricane would. And that is going to be a dramatically fainted Manaphy there. So with that thing out of the way, we have now found ourselves with a huge upper hand. They are definitely put on the back foot in that I am faster than everything. And uh, we've got ourselves a good time also knowing that they've used up their Terra. So, Megazation comes in. And this Zamazenta Shield Boy is pretty bulky. Not bulky enough to be able to live... A stab hurricane after all of the boosts. Problem is, I have to land the hurricane, which seems impossible because it actually misses. And now that allows them to go for the body press. Now here's the thing: I live with one HP, which is actually the most clutch thing ever. <laughs> and I uh, that is insane. The one HP live is going to basically just solidify the fact that this thing is the goat. So I'm gonna try to go for another hurricane. I basically I need to land a hurricane to knock this thing out. Luckily this time. We do connect, hurricane season is not over, and that is gonna take care of the uh, of the doggo. So that takes care of that. It's kind of the one thing that could at least have a chance there with the hurricane misses. And while being at one HP is putting me at risk for something like a priority, it doesn't look like they have anything left with the three months. So as they go into the Glamora, that is potential soak, focus ash broken by the stealth rock. A fiery wrath just easily is enough to kill like six or seven of them boys. And that's going to take care of the flower. So now, as they go into Haxorus, this thing does have the opportunity to run things like First Impression. If they did have it, they probably would have used it already. And uh, it tells me it's probably not going to be First Impression. And I can just go for Stab Fiery Wraths out here and truly just show the wrath of a boy going berserk. We are just <laughs> absolutely roasted and toasting fools. Fireless. And that takes care of Haxorus, which is amazing. And uh, sometimes you just need the opportunity to set up. And honestly, agility is the true goat here. Allowing me to be faster than everything. Speed, truly, it really helps. So now they go into the golden go. They cannot Terra out of uh, the fiery wrath here. I do, of course, outspeed. And that is easily going to take care of the golden string cheese guy. So while things looked bleak for us, the setup actually came in extremely clutch. And Galarian Moltres shows exactly what this boy is supposed to do. And that is going to be the end of the first game. And uh, that was just kind of a, a ridiculous showcase. So, we already know that we have another game here. And if you've made it to this far into the video, you should just hit that like button. Because it does help out the channel. And if you're enjoying the video, I would really appreciate it for real. But, we've got ourselves another really good game here. Now, one thing to note, this team looks extremely bulky and stally. Which is uh, not my favorite archetype to play against. However, it does happen. So, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this time my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Dusknor. Now this thing comes out waving his hands around like a shitty magician, and I have a slug to just kind of lay down some stealth rock here and have a nice little little sluggy time leaving around a little trail. So I don't imagine Dusknor can do too much to me. If he wants to knock off, I'm actually sticky hold and just take that rocky helmet chip, which is fine. So I set up my stealth rock here as they're actually gonna end up switching out into this thing. Aloma Mola is incredibly annoying, especially for Gastrodon matchup. Because I can't really do anything to it, and while it can't really touch me, it could potentially go for things like a Toxic. And overall, Aloma Mola just never dies, and it's, it's so annoying. So, 
I realized they're probably going to Toxic here. I consider going to Magnezone, but then I'm like, you know, one of my best ways around you know, helping me get through this is going to be trying to poison it. And while I don't have Toxic on anything, Phasendipity can use its Toxic Chain ability to try to make some contact and get it the old-fashioned way. So I go into the Fez here. As they actually go for the Whirlpool, that's going to try to lock me in, which is like the worst possible thing ever versus an Alimamola. Because this thing can wish and just heal itself, and you take a chip every, every second, and it can just slowly just win the the <laughs> the fight of just boredom. So, I take some Rocky Helmet there. I do get the poison with the poison jab. Sadly, it's not the bad poison, so it's just regular, but some continuous chip every turn is totally fine. Also, we saw it's Rocky Helmet, so it's not going to recover every turn, which means it probably has wish in, like, protect, and god, I hate this thing. So... I realize that, you know, I'm stuck in with Whirlpool, so I cannot switch out, but what I can do is just go for a U-turn, which is going to allow me to get out of there, and we do not give a damn about a Whirlpool. So, I do just take some more Rocky Helmet, but it, uh, it cost him willing to freaking pay, because now I can switch out, and I am pretty in a decent spot here. So, I decide I'm going to go into the Pin Kirchen. One of the modes on this squad is to get up the Electric Terrain to try to boost up my Magnezone, who's got some fun shenanigans in the back. So, I get that Electric Surge up, and I also have good coverage, you know, versus the Olomomola, as they are going to go for the Wish, because, again, this thing is annoying. It does at least take some poison, so it's chilling at around half. It is going to heal all that back, and as I realized, they could just go for a Protect. I'm going to prioritize getting up some more Spikes. With all the Hazard set up, I feel like they're not going to be able to get rid of them, and it's going to make my job a whole lot easier in getting through all of these incredibly bulky mods. So, it does go for the Protect. Obviously, I'm just going to lay down some Brethren over there, some spiky-ass Legos on their side of the field. And that's going to be pretty nice. I know from the start, looking at this team composition, one of the ways for me to get around it is going to be set up. And uh, with all the defense in the world, you can't stop me. So, I realize at this point, I'm just going to go for a Memento. They can whirlpool me in to try to keep me around. But what a Memento does is it kind of just puts them on the back foot. In that uh, Galarian Moltres has a really good time taking attacks from things. Especially if they have been hit by a Memento. So... That's the idea behind this little Lego guy. He not only enables the Magnezone, but also, you know, allows just kind of some uh, some pivots in allowing me to get things in that I need to. So, as they go into the Hippowdon here, that is fine. They do set up the Sandstorm. However, I do basically just cut that offense in half and just kill myself. So, that's easy. it's fine because Pink Urchin did what I needed to do. And I have a couple different options. I decide it is Bernice time, baby. With this thing, I know I can take any attack from this Hippowdon ever. And... One of the good situations in this is while I ordinarily need to set up an agility to be faster than things, their team is so bulky that all I really need is just nasty plots. I'm going to be faster than everything anyway. And after one nasty plot here, they're just going to set up the stealth rock. They know that they can't really touch me. And if they do, they're probably going to maybe put me below half to activate that berserk and get me to plus three. And as I'm looking at it here, they have so much bulk in the back that I'm just, there's nothing really stopping me from going for another nasty plot. We're feeling extra nasty in today's matchup, so they're actually going to end up switching, they're going to go back into the big old thicky ass fish, and that is kind of what I expected because I'm just going to go for that second nasty plot, and after the stealth rock and spikes, plus with that poison at the end of the turn, we're going to have this thing in range, especially after plus four special attack, that's uh, not only is it going to do a ton of damage to it, I also know that this thing can't really, you know, touch me, unless it wants to like poison me or something. Moral of the story, I really don't care anything this thing wants to do to me. And that's the one way you can kind of exploit things like a Lomomola is just through setup. It's kind of just a setup fodder. And at this point, I go for that Fiery Wrath and that's gonna just take care of the fella. With as many nasty plots as we have up, there's truly not much that wants to take attacks from the Moltres. Plus, we just have the benefit of being able to set up two of them as opposed to having to go for an agility because they decided to have just the slowest squad ever. So. As they now decide to bring in the Galarian Slow King, obviously this thing just gets absolutely toasted by um, a stab freaking dark type Fiery Wrath. So I imagine they probably commit a Terra here, which that's what they're going to do. They're going to pull out the defensive Terra just to be able to get off an attack. But once again, I still feel like I can take anything from this. It can't go for a stab psychic move, obviously. Its best bet would be something like a Sludge Bomb that I know I can at least live. And then I just get another free boost with that Berserk. So they're going to bust out the Terra Fairy, which is fine. You know, the uh, Fire Wrath isn't going to do too much here, but they actually decide to go for the Toxic, which is like, it's a good move in one sense, in that, you know, eventually I'm going to be whittled down from the Toxic. Also, 
in that if I get knocked below half from the Toxic, I actually don't get my Berserk activated, and that's because it needs to be knocked by an attack rather than something passive like a poison. So the Toxic is going to put me on a little bit of a timer, and the good thing is I really care about that timer. We're over here just flapping our wings slow as hell, but that's mostly fine because I can now just go for another Fiery Wrath here. It is going to be enough to take care of the Glow King even with that Terra, which is just nuts. I do get the crit, which I don't believe mattered. You know what, it actually might have mattered. I don't know, it was a really close roll. I just basically didn't want to go for the Hurricane there because I knew it was probably going to miss. But that's going to take care of the Glarian Slow King, which is pretty solid. So we are obviously going to be taking built up poison damage from the Toxic, but they don't really have much to defensively take attacks from a plus four Moltres here. So they're going to switch into the Garganachi. This thing comes in looking like he's straight out of Minecraft. Also looking small, but he needs to hit the damn gym or something. But the Stealth Rock and the Spikes is going to make me feel pretty comfortable in that a plus four Fiery Wrath should be able to take care of it. But on the off chance that this thing does live, I'm actually just going to bust out a Fairy Terra of my own. That's just because then if they hit me with the Assault Cure, I'm not going to take as much damage as I would not being super effective. And I can try to just keep the Moltres sweep going and try to just get the full body back here. So the Fiery Wrath does come through looking badass and that just straight up deletes the guy. And that's always a fantastic sight to see in that Garganachi is the, the most annoying thing apart from freaking Aloma Mola and Blissey. And uh, the one hit KO, it feels nice. So you notice there the poison does put me below half, does not activate Berserk because it wasn't from an attack. I do, however, get that Citrus Berry, and that's going to allow me at least another, like, free two turns, which is amazing, because they're just slowly <laughs> running out of options. And as they go into the Lapras here, they don't have the ability to Terra from anything. This is a generally pretty bulky fella. The Stealth Rocks did its thing, and a Fiery Wrath is just going to be able to take care of the Majestic little dude. So down goes the Lapras, and we're going on an absolute Moltres tear here. So at this point, they're down to two Mons left. They have the Hippowdon along with the Dusknoir, and as I do take some more poison, I'm feeling like we can pull it out with just the just the Galarian bird here, which is the body bag we're looking for. So they do decide to go into the Dust Nor. Obviously this thing, it, I mean, it could like potentially shadow sneak, but I mean, that's not even gonna save it. And I just have to just show off my Fiery Wrath some more. It's like one of the most beautiful attacks. Kind of trippy looking, but that just deletes the guy. And yeah, you let this thing set up on you and you're, sometimes you don't even need the Berserk. It's a very, it's a super fun mon to use. There's a lot of options with it as well. As I get knocked down to poison, I have one turn left in me, but it turns out that's that's all you need left. All I need is one more turn as the Hippowdon has uh, taken a little bit of chip and also it has no chance in living here. We're gonna Fiery Wrath right into them big old nostril holes and uh, it's easily gonna be able to take care of it. So super fun mon, a lot of ways to use it. You can go like weakness policy to just get even faster boost, like pair that with taking a super effective hit and getting Berserk is insane. I like Citrus Berry for longevity. Uh, that's going to be a dead hippo. And that is also going to be the end of the game. So kind of just, once again, a ridiculous match. But we love to see the show, bring it back to Shofu body bags out here. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support. For real, you guys are absolutely amazing. And I will catch you next time. Peace out.